I start seeing the fairies when my brother went to school. Okay, I'm not even a year younger than my brother Torrance. He's like my Irish twin. I was born... Well, oh, I was born a week before he turned one, so we're not a year apart. My brother went to school at three, and I missed him terribly. And then I started seeing the fairies, and they were like, it's going to be okay. They consoled me. They would talk to me. They were like, let's just play, because that's all my brother and I did, because he was three and I was two. We were kids. That's all we did was play. And my brother smiled all the time. He's a sanguine personality, and you, the first thing you see when you see him is his big teeth. He just smiles all the time. Nothing gets him down. So I started seeing the first. I remember seeing them at by the time I was two. Mm-hmm. I lived in D.C. at the time. Um, we were on a first level apartment, and um, oh, and they wanted me to go with them. But I would notice a lot of times when they flew away, they seemed to go out the window or in the wall, and I would like to go to the window and look at them as far as I could see them. But I was scared to go in the wall. <laughs> and then again, I don't even think I could go in the wall. But um, we would get to playing, and I'd be following them through the house. Mm-hmm. But they were always. I haven't had a negative experience with the fairy. Always positive, pleasant, um, I just a beautiful, just a beautiful experience. But I, I let them know if any anything surrounding them is negative, they cannot bring it to me. And I've gotcha. been doing that since I was two. As just I, I'm able to do that. Gotcha. So with all the stuff I've been through, I'm able to be optimistic and say, "Thank God, I'm still here. I'm here for a purpose to work with children and help them." Yeah. I, you know, I, you know, as children, and I've, I don't think I've ever had this, to be honest, but I know, you know, just there's, there's this whole concept of children that ha- having imaginary friends. Do you think some of those and times, do you think some of those mm-hmm. times that may actually be fairies or, or no? Of course, of course, because you're, you, you, you know, you three or four years old, you're not told, oh man, that's not real. For questions, comments, and to show your support. Visit us on the web at afroempath.com. You know, as empath, we're pretty deep as people, right? So, I mean, I'm just curious mm-hmm. to know about your life, you know, like just kind of just like your, your overall story, I'm going to say, and the kind of um, how, you do, how you understood yourself as an empath. Like, were you, are, you, are you an introverted person or are you an extroverted person, would you say? I'm introverted. I knew it was empath before I came out of the womb. <laughs> oh, Yeah. Yes. So I have a very interesting story. Go ahead. Because people believe people believe that um, kids um, takes a while to, for their personality personality to develop and the temperament and all that stuff. It's already there when they're born. Like um, I told my mom, I, I'm 50, mm-hmm. and I'm a poet and a writer. I'm a youth advocate. I work with children. I can basically work with a group of people and read them and and problem solve issues with little kids. Mm-hmm. Like. Um, I've seen fairies since I was two, and most people don't believe it, but I've seen what them. Is that? What, is, what, is, what is a fairy? Please please do tell. I've been curious to know. Okay. Fairies, uh, okay, you know nature has duality. Spirituality has duality. So so fairies, okay, for instance, um, like when you get old enough, like your, your perception may be limited. It may become limited based on experience and what you learn and develop. But a fairy is a mischievous creature, and each fairy, you learn the fairy by their eyes. Their eyes are all different, and their eyes tell their personality. Like the ones I saw, they were pretty mischievous. There was always a leader among them, and the leader was pretty scary. I mean, being a two- or three-year-old, was like, what is that? And um, basically, they would fly around, and they would call my name and say they want to play with me because they love certain people. They're, they're attracted to certain people and certain energies. And... Even though I'm 50, I still have like a playful, youthful inner child. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I can still see them. Like I can actually hear them sing to me. It's like um, you just have to know what you're dealing with because uh, like it's a veil. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And there's duality right there. So it's it's negative and positive and it's good and evil. I'm just using those terms. You know what I'm saying? Because people understand those terms. No, I understand. So you have to know. You have to know when you're crossing the veil and what's going to happen when you're crossing the veil. Because <laughs> weird stuff happens. I'm also diagnosed as a schizotypal. Have you heard of a schizotypal? Mm-hmm. What is that? You have heard of it? No, I have not. Please explain. Oh, okay. Okay, so they have the schizophrenics, who um, that's a brain disorder. Um, my sister has schizophrenia, so she sees and hears evil things. I do not. So I can hear and see things that the average person can't hear or see it, because I'm open-minded. Um, like I said, with the furries, for instance, I can hear and sing, hear, hear singing, like beautiful singing in a language I've never heard before. <laughs> and being a writer, if I could write music, I would, but I don't know how, I don't know what the uh, 
and they're always upbeat songs, like very happy music, like just heavenly, beautiful music. Um, and schizotypers, they're extremely introverted. They are not people persons, but they understand people very well. Um, I learned a lot in my introversion and being by myself. I learned a lot about people, believe it or not, being alone. Mm -hmm. um, let me see. Um, the genius prone. So, you know, genius aren't really people persons. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, at nine, I got diagnosed as being a genius. Um, I've been raped. And I was uh, sodomized repeatedly when I was a child. And that's another reason why I advocate for kids. I had a brother commit suicide when he was 11. He hung himself in the house. Um, depression and anxiety runs in our family. But I understand it very well. So I pretty much advocate for kids based on my experiences and what I can bring to the table. Because I believe that our kids are a major resource that we have. We have to take care of that. It's precious. But it's also very valuable to us. Because if you notice with, with kids, you can stop me anytime because I really could go. <laughs> no, sis. No, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm soaking it all up. Please oh, okay. keep talking. So I don't know if you're at work. Or <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. So I, I um, children, I, um, I believe, I, right. I believe that, um, you know, and I teach children when I work with the children. I've worked with children for over 30 plus years. I have two children in the military, a son and a daughter. And um, I used to babysit when I was probably about eight. And I mean, what I made the children do was like act like they were in a school setting. So I gave them homework and stuff like that. And I, I learned from teachers that it seemed like you could work with children in a controlled setting. So I figured this is the best way to keep them safe and to keep them learning. So I would give them, you know, homework. <laughs> and it worked out. And I had people always tell me I should be a teacher. So I'm going to start probably substitute teaching where I'm, I moved from, from Maryland to Virginia. So, um, it's a bit more open-minded as far as volunteering and stuff like that. But I can, I mean, okay, for a perfect example, kids accept me as a soulmate. Strange kids. Like, my my kids, like, we used to go to places together when they were little. And, like, for instance, I went to a gas station, and um, the uh, couple in front of me were pulling up in front of me, and they happened to park beside us at the gas station. And the kids in the back were waving to me, and my daughter's like, Mom, do you notice? Who are those kids? And I'm like, just don't worry about it. They know me. <laughs> and um, they would just wave. They want to play games with me. They just know I'm a uh, gentle soul. You know what I mean? No, I understand. Like a gentle spirit, and I'm not a threat to them. But, I mean, I could go to the mall. I could go to the library. All I have to do is just just, just um, sense what's around them and look in their eyes. But I don't always have to look in their eyes. Sometimes they'll look at me like, for instance, my friend and I, we were at a mall. And we walked past this uh, store. And you know how they have glass stores when you're inside the mall so you can see what's in the store. Mm -hmm. So this little girl was at the window. And when I see little kids like that, I get concerned a bit because I think, where are the parents and why are the parents watching the child? Why is the child this far from the parent? <laughs> you know, the society we live in, that's not really kosher. Mm -hmm. But there was a little girl in there, I, I guess her age, maybe five or six. And um, my friend and I were talking, and I saw her out of my front I'm like, oh, this little kid's going to want to talk to me or want to play with me. I can sense it. So I'm walking by the store, and the little kid is right in the window just looking at me, and she had these beautiful big eyes, and she just would not stop smiling at me. And when we walked away, she was, like, looking for me to continue to play with her. But stuff like this happens to me all the time, and it's very surprising because sometimes I don't know when to, when to expect it. Um, trying to think. I want to, I mean, I believe it. I believe, go, go, ahead. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, you first, and then I'm going to cut you off after that. Go ahead. No, you can go ahead. You can go ahead. I think I've I kind of told you. No. I want to understand the fairy kingdom. Really? Heck yeah, man. What are you crazy? Of course. <laughs> yeah, uh, I just told you I was a schizo. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the whole point. I need, I need to, I want to um, understand this. Now, number one, now, do they I look was born different? like that, though. I was yeah, but let me ask you this, sister. Let me, let me ask you this, sister, because this is something I've heard and I've heard, and I'm not. I never doubted it. I just, it's not. It's not necessarily my calling. I'll just put it that that see that way. But let me ask you now: Have you met anybody else that is that is uh, understands the fairy kingdom besides you? No. Okay, because you know you know there are other people, right? And other black women too, right? Yeah, I mean, I haven't not met people. I talk to people online, but I haven't met them because some of them don't just believe in fairies. They believe in a whole lot of other stuff, and they can take you to a different level and Understood. a different realm. Let me, I don't want to be let, there. Let me let me ask you about your your spiritual foundation. What 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 would you what would you I say you're God. centered in? God. Okay, gotcha. I raised, so I was raised I was raised strict Catholic, which means we went to church four days a week. Gotcha. So do you, so you believe in you believe in God and you believe in His Son, right? Or Christ or yeah. Horus, et cetera. Jesus Christ, yes, yes. Gotcha. Okay, gotcha. Now, um, so all right, so let's let's go to the but, whole thing. But, but schizotypes, but schizotypes typically typically believe on orthodox stuff. They typically don't believe what their family and culture teaches them. No, okay, that's fine. That's fine. But I just I just yeah, want to make okay. sure, I just want to make sure 
just for the listeners that you're centered in something. You know what I'm trying to say? You know. Oh sure. Yeah, and just for myself too. It's 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 good, it's good to know um, because it's it 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 pu- it puts a good contrast to um may- maybe I'll give you an example. So maybe there's a listener that listen that's listening, and mm-hmm. they have a background in the church, and maybe things like this maybe are not talked about in the church. So maybe maybe when people see things like this, maybe growing up, maybe they might feel a certain way to talk to people because of it. Does it make sense? Okay. Um, you know how I would explain it to them? Mm-hmm. Um, now, okay, let me see how you put this. Uh, there are people that go to church and mm-hmm. don't really understand what they're learning. They're cheap. Yeah, the believers, yeah. Not to, not to offend anybody, but I know who I'm talking to. You know what no, I'm saying? No, I understand. In the Bible, it says they're uh, sheep and shepherds. So, sheep, sheep and shepherds. So right, a, right. So distinction. Um, I would kind of probably listen to them a little bit and try to feel where they're coming from. And um, just explain to them, okay, if you believe in God, uh, you believe that Jesus Christ existed and he came to die for you, blah, 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 but he also said he came to heal the sick. Do you recall the scripture where it says somebody touched him and he felt the power come from out of him? From his clothes. So that's an unseen force. A fairy is an unseen force. Fairies are very powerful and they can be very dangerous. That's why it's best to understand them before you mess with them. Does that make sense to you? No, I understand, but let me let me ask you this. Like, I'm I'm wondering, um, may, maybe what I call uh, a spirit or a demon is what you call a fairy, or no? Is it something different? Does it make sense to you? What, or fairies are like elementals? What you're saying is that what they are? Elemental spirits, or what? What exactly is a fairy? I'm, I'm, just help me understand. Here. I, I consider them. I consider them something that's out or out of worldly because okay, let's say for instance, I saw one. It was a fairy, but it was a fat guy. Okay, he he flew on a motorcycle. It was very and they're very colorful, very colorful motorcycle. And, okay, kids can see it too. Like, say, for instance, I walk in the store sometime, and I might sense a fairy or see a fairy, and kids' eyes will follow it. They will ch- I have seen kids chase them through the store, and, and, and the parents are like, what are you doing? But I'm laughing because I know the kid sees it because their perception hasn't changed. Um, okay, what they are is they what you allow them to be in your life based on your perception and your knowledge. Does that make sense? Yeah, but let me ask you, what do they look like? Do they look different? I- oh, they are they are. Oh, they're the most beautiful things you've ever seen in your life. That's why I'm like, if I could paint or they are the most beautiful things you've ever seen in your All right, life. Well, give, give, me, give me a reference based upon, you know, something I might have a seen reference. in a movie or, or a, a cartoon or a Disney oh, something. Just, wow. you know, are they black? Um, are they white? Are they colorful? Are they have wings? Colors. Do they fly? They're are they small? Colors. They're, 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 <laughs> they're different colors based on like, like, like their species, based on where they're from. Um, gosh. Uh I'm trying to think of what one. Uh, okay, well, you know Tinkerbell, for example. Mm-hmm. That's an example of a fairy, but not a powerful fairy. That that fairy was watered down. Mm-hmm. So, um, okay, um, let's say for instance they have different kinds. They have like the sprites. They have the elementals. Um, let's say for instance, um, and I'm trying to think what kind it was. I can't think of what it is. I'm sorry, okay. but uh, there's one that let's say for instance they tell you. Um, like if you leave uh, milk out, if you feed them, it can be dangerous to leave stuff out for them. Mm-hmm. Like for instance, if they start eating from you or drinking your milk or something like that, they become, oh, they're possessive. That's what I'm trying to think of. It, oh, they can become possessive. You know how you have a pet or something? And cats and dogs can see them too. Animals can see them too. Mm-hmm. I had like 10 cats. And um, like for instance, there was one in our house and my niece would take pictures of us. It was me and, and three other nieces, three of my nieces, two of my nieces. And every time they took a picture of me by myself, there was an orb, a white orb. And then when they kept taking the pictures with them, the orb was gone. So when they would take the picture of me, my cat came running down. My cat saw it. My cat was looking up at it in like two of the pictures. And they said, I'm not taking any more pictures of you because this is creepy. And they stopped taking pictures of me. <laughs> but this was just that, that particular day. But I try to tell them stuff like um, I had two nieces that are looking. Um, we're looking on YouTube and different stuff. And um, they got cable or something. And they started to learn a little bit about it. You, I, you, I, the only thing I can tell you is meditate and uh, close your eyes and just imagine something that's more beautiful than anything you have ever seen in your life. And I guarantee you, you're going to see anywhere from one to four fairies. I hear you. I mean, I'm not, see, me, me personally, I'm not necessarily trying to see fairies, man. I'm trying to get the hell up out of this oh, damn world. To, <laughs> but, I, but I'm curious. Wear- I'm not like, I'll put it this way. I'm not really cons- like. I just want to know because I'm interested because I'm curious because I like to know all things metaphysical and hidden in this world. Oh, okay. But me personally, there, I'm, there I'm, like not, a, I'm, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to contact fairies. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, for me, 
I'm oh, not saying, I see what you mean. You yeah, just want to understand. I want to understand. Oh, wow. Exactly. Yeah. And let me let me say this as well, because I'm not sure if these are fairies or not, but in terms of just like spirits and things like that, you know, I've, I've had uh, situations where I, you know, there's, there's this feral cat that I've been kind of allowing, allowing in my house for the last couple of months and feeding him. Uh-huh. And, you uh-huh. know, I was trying to make him my own, but he, he, he ain't really having it, you know? But anyway, I, you know, he would come, he would come in my house sometimes. So you know, every you know, every now and then after, after he hasn't been in a while, and he would just come in yeah. the house and he would just like he would walk in and was almost like get the hell out of here to something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> get the hell well, up out of here. They're they're they're. Uh, I'm not saying I don't know if it's a fairy or not, they, but okay, whatever say, it is, he um, he doesn't. Whatever, my cat, one fairy, go one fairy, they have like good and bad, and like kind of like a human nature. Only they're they're magical. Let's say they can bring good luck or they can bring you bad luck. Gotcha. Does that make sense? No, yeah. I hear what you're saying, but but, I, but, I, but, but if I'm, you're if you get to if you get to know them, and the thing is, they can attract more fairies. Oh, okay. Like for instance, if you're outside, they like moss. You know moss yeah. on the ground. Mm-hmm. Like I can be outside, and I'll hear them. Stop! Stop! You're walking on us. Stop! Stop! You're killing. Them. <laughs> you're going to kill them. So I have to go another route because they'll let me know that I'm coming in their territory. And some of them might welcome you into their territory, and they'll actually tell you where to go so you don't step on them. Gotcha. I'm just, I'm just trying to. And see, they like certain trees. They like water. They like certain things. Then, that, that, like the nature ones, they're attracted to certain parts of nature. Now, have you learned this on your own? They live in like little villages and stuff, huh? Have you learned this on your own or, or by experience? Yeah, or, did you, because, or is this just and, from reading? and they'll tell you. They'll tell you what they want you to know about them. Because, mm-hmm. like I said, they're different groups. How, does, how, different do, how do ones. they speak to you? How about a what? How do they speak to you? Like, um, like is it like? But their um, voice, they, I can hear them. Like okay, telepathically, it's, it's, I guess I can hear. Them. Okay, is it telepathically or clear clear audience or like what is it exactly? Oh, uh, uh, um, like is I there voice telepathically? Yeah, telepathically? Okay, if they're okay. my fairy. If they consider me a possession, it's telepathic. Gotcha. Yeah, something else that I don't know would be clear audience. That does does that make sense? Yeah, cl- clear audience is like you hear a voice in your head. Tele- tele- telepathy te- telepathy is like. Um, mind to mind. Spirit yeah, exactly. Spirit. Yeah, that tele- yeah, telepathy so, is what you yeah, have. That's with a what cat. I was trying to explain it. Yeah, because if, if, like I said, if I'm their possession, it's telepathic. Okay, if they gotcha. Consider me their possession. Gotcha. Yeah, but it's it's a whole it's a whole lot of them. That's like um oh, and I I did a family history and I found out that we're from West Africa and the British Isles. So you know that's England and that's uh what was was it Welsh. Irish and Scottish and all that stuff over there. And you know, the Scots and stuff, they believe, you know, the Irish, they typically believe in leprechauns and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But, and my thing is, in order for this stuff to be believed, somebody had to see it somewhere in their mind's eye. So it does exist. Just No, I'm not. I never, I never, I never, I never doubt it. it. I never doubted it. I just didn't really care, to be yeah. honest. I'm not trying to be yeah. me. I'm not trying to be me. I just, I got, yeah, I got better I mean, things to do. I'm trying to. It, if you want to think, uh huh. I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying to work on getting my my force field stronger in the palm of my hand. So I, I'm, I don't have time to think about fairies. But I mean, I, I. <laughs> They're everywhere, believe it or not. No, but I, but I, but I, I'm just saying, I, you know, I'm just, I'm just curious to know. And because number one, I don't think you're obviously not the only person that is has worked with fairies or has seen fairies, etc. So I'm not. I want. I'm. This is a place where people like yourself can, um. You know, give give your give your life experience to help others not feel crazy or something like that. You know, in the future. Yeah, yeah, and you and you're absolutely right. And honestly, uh, nobody is crazy. You know, it's it, it to me, it's about perception. Like for instance, if somebody goes out and kills somebody, and they said a voice told them to do it, it's possible that they heard a voice. But at the end of the day, they can make a choice and not listen to the voice. Mm-hmm. You see what I mean? Yeah. And not everybody has that ability and understanding to do that. Like my sister, when she babysit us, she has schizophrenia. So I would see her talking to the wall, and there was nobody there. Like, I would have to keep talking to her, and she would flip out and yell at me because I was disturbing her. But when they hear the noise, it's like static. It's like a radio station, you know, it's in between stations. So they hear all that static, and they don't hear you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so they have difficulty with, with reality. Gotcha. I mean, this is yeah, we're, we're, reality. Yeah, yeah here, exactly. Yeah, we're, we're living in a dream. So, I mean, I've, I've, always, I've always wondered, yeah, like... I, in terms mm-hmm. of schizophrenia, you know, um, wh- wh- whether people are just having a hard time living in the matrix, you know what I'm trying to say, and they just they just kind of tune out into a s- certain frequency, just to, you know, for, for whatever I'm reason. I'm gonna tell you what it is, and I'm gonna tell you another thing about me. I should have told you. Um, I'm uh, hypersensitive. Mm-hmm. So they're hypersensitive, and um, you know how they say, uh, I guess in medicine, whatever, that there's a there's a polarity. You can go too far left or too far right. Uh, too far right. Like for instance, my sister is an amazing artist. So 
that part of the brain where the creativity kicks in. She can paint and draw anything. She used to make up uh, figures and, you know, characters and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but she lost her son. He died prematurely. And after that, she stopped doing art. So she lost desire for it. But she was really great at it. And um, I guess when um, so much stuff can happen to you and then, you know, you, you, she, she has more of a melancholic personality. So, you know, she's doing really well, to be honest, but it's not as good as she could be because she's such an amazing artist. She would be probably famous by now. But being shy and stuff, she doesn't want that lifestyle, you know. But um, I just think they, uh, they don't know how to, okay, let's say, for instance, for me, let's say if I'm grocery shopping or I'm doing something I really have to focus on, like driving, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I have to be safe. So if I'm hearing the fairies or hearing this stuff, I have to be able to block it out. So I can focus and do what I want to do. Schizophrenics don't have that ability. You know what I mean? I hear what you're saying. Yeah, I see. I hear what you're saying. Yeah, they don't have that to say, okay, stop bothering me. Because honestly, you can say what you want. There is something there. Based on their perception, there is something there. We don't no, have to see I, hear, it. I hear what you're but saying. They yeah. have difficulty trying to uh, focus with it. And, and that, I mean, but I was born knowing how to do that. And I, don't, I can't explain it. No, I understand. Okay, like for instance, and I'm. Um, you know how um, people call themselves multitasking and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, I have, um, I was born to, with the ability, let's say I'm talking to you, right? I could be reading a book and watching TV. I know exactly what's going on in that TV. I remember what you're talking about in the conversation, and I know exactly where I'm at in the book. I can do that. I can pay attention. And, like, when I would do my homework, my brother and I, we would need music and stuff to help us study. If it was too quiet, we had difficulty studying. So hearing the extra quote unquote noise helped us so all these sounds and it may be because my dad was a musician or something like that all these sounds are like like you know melodious to me you know what i mean mm -hmm. yeah so. and and some people can deal with all of that quote unquote noise but some people can't mm -hmm. yeah right. i want i want to jump back into the whole fairy thing because I, i'm curious okay, to understand okay. because all right so I'm going to explain my understanding in terms, and this is, and this, I don't, I don't necessarily know what fairies are, but um, I'm going to say that like, I do, I do know about demons, you know what I'm trying to say, or spirits, you know what I'm trying to say, and mm -hmm. you know, spirits can mm -hmm. be both, you know, spirits, I don't know about fairies, I don't know if it, spirits and fairies are the same thing, but I'm just going to speak from my experience that, you know, spirits can be both negative and positive, you know what I'm trying to say, and mm -hmm. uh, the Christian theology, they talk about Christ being a Holy Spirit or a Holy Ghost. Or you know the spirit mm -hmm. of the spirit of Christ. Obviously, there's there's Christ, the the the, the physical human being, and then and then um, you know his spirit, and then obviously his his father, which is is God. You know what I'm say? Um, mm -hmm. So that that'd be the Trinity. So obviously, uh, spirits are not necessarily all negative in polarity, but um, right. I'll, I'll just say that um, I've I've seen what um, what a what a demon looks like. I guess you would say it 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 it, it just looks like a. It, it, it looks like a like a ball of smoke, like a like a like a plume uh -huh. of smoke. And uh, mm -hmm. I took it I took it out of a I took it out of a friend, you know, when I was do I put I was putting put my hands over him and doing some type of healing, and it and uh, and I took it out of him and it shot out of me out, out of my window, you know. So wow. it, it just it just looked, it just it just looked like a, like a little plume of smoke. It was, you know it was so fa it went so fast that you I mean you could almost you wouldn't maybe you could maybe think to yourself maybe that didn't just happen but I, it definitely happened. So. I from what I'm from the description that I'm hearing, fairies may not be that. You know, say fairies might be something different than a than a than a spirit like that. Now, to make, try to make me understand what 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 is the difference. I'm not sure if you don't know what, exactly what I'm with talking a fairy, about. Okay, with a fairy, uh, the first thing they want to do is they want they want to get to know you and they want possession and ownership of you. Mm -hmm. Okay, that doesn't mean ownership. You don't give them ownership of your spirit. Your spirit, you give them ownership of your space. Mm -hmm. But Tell them from your heart that you'll be loving to them. Mm -hmm. You don't have a problem with them. They can't touch you. They can't harm you. You don't give them the uh, uh, ability to bring bad luck to your life. They can bring good to your life. And another thing they do is they take your shit. Excuse my French. You'll be looking for something and you'll swear you know where you put it at. And, then, and normally when I have experiences like that, when I'm kind of losing stuff, I would eventually find it, but sometimes I ask the fairies for help, and you can name them. Like I name my fairies, I repeat the name because they're not, they're my fairies. You see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I might be looking for stuff, and I've been looking for it for two weeks, and I'll say, "Such and such, can you please tell me where it is?" I'm like, "It's right there." So you know, you, you can now, communicate with them. And okay. there are times when 
you won't you won't notice them for maybe a week or a month or it may be years go by, but you'll notice based on the situation, what's going on, that is that fairy doing this or whatever. I don't know how to explain. They they I wouldn't say it caused confusion. I would I would I mean I used to think it was confusion. Oh, and they can cause chaos. <laughs> but it's um it's not serious. You know what I'm saying? It's not gotcha. gonna be direct harm to you. Gotcha. So, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, I've, I've, I mean, in the, in the, I'm just going off of what I've seen in movies now, right? Of course, I'm not, I'm, I don't know anything yeah. about that realm, but yeah. I mean, and so like, let's like for instance, if something I need to work on, mm -hmm. they're like, they can be like helper guides. Mm -hmm. Like I have a really powerful fairy that I work with, and I named her, and of course she has another name, but like whatever her uh, culture is, I'll say that. She has a different name, but I can name her when I want to name her. And that's the main one I'll call her, and, and you know what I'm saying? But sometimes when you call that fairy, they bring the troops. <laughs> and you see, so and like, you actually I see these? Story, uh -huh, I asked this fairy to help me with one problem, and then this other stuff happened. And somebody might call that bad luck, but it's not really bad luck. To me, bad luck is dying. Having, pro having other issues to deal with is just problem solving. It might maybe there's a lesson you need to learn in that situation. You know what I mean? Okay, so but let me let me ask you like yeah. what what exactly like what does she look like number one and what what does the other ones look like I'm trying to you know describe them oh okay so for instance the one I told you about that was on the motorcycle with the the colors they how are, big is um, that how big is that I want I want an actual like give me a size okay, you comparison like your fist you like your fist yes this one was probably fist size and this one got mad because my cat found out where it was hiding its peanut butter believe it or not this one it's, loves it's peanut, peanut butter. butter. Okay. And it, yeah, and it kept going up in this tree, and I was working, and I kept wondering, like, what was going on with my cat, and I was like, dang, going it there's, there's, oh, and like, um, okay, perfect example. Have you seen the movie Pulled the Guys? Uh, yeah, it's been a while though. Okay, when the when the beams, the the, the spirits were moving in back and forth, the balls, the spirit balls. Yeah. I don't remember what they were called. Okay, a fairy moves like almost like speed of light. They're so fast. But you see colors. Uh, you might see lavender. You might see green and white. They like rainbow colors. They're the most they're really, really beautiful colors. And they're sparkly and they're shiny and their eyes are huge and they're beautiful. Um, let's say, for instance, I might see one like she might have like a ballerina dress on, but she might have really dark eyes, which means she has a mysterious nature. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But she might like to dance. I'm just saying, for example. But you'll see them different shapes, kind of, kind of like people in a way. But their eyes are all the same. But there's, there's, they're probably fist size or smaller. They're really not that big. So what, what, what is their role in terms of our ascension? I'm just putting it that way. Um, I think they keep you, keep you guided, like a north star, something like that. You just follow it. Gotcha. Now let me ask you this. Yeah. Now you, you, do you, you said you had some traumatic experiences in your childhood. Yes. A lot of them. And my dad was a heroin addict. He beat my mom while she was pregnant. Da 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 da. We were homeless a lot. I mean, a whole lot of stuff. I mean, you know, a lot of stuff. And to me, oh, like I meant to tell you earlier, when I work with kids, I teach them the two B's. You can choose to be a victim or a victor. Mm -hmm. I hope you choose the latter. Because I try to teach them your negative, like, like for instance, like I might have a poetry workshop with kids or something like that and tell them to problem solve, get a piece of paper and write down a list of goals, hold the paper up and take a pen and put a hole in it. See, this is what can happen. Now, if this happens, then what can you do? You still have other options. You know what I'm saying? It's just trying mm -hmm. to keep them focused on something positive and being open-minded. And I teach them to redirect their anger into some kind of art form, whether it be poetry, um, writing a book, painting, music, something like that, just to teach them to know what to do when they get frustrated. You know what I mean? Yeah, an outlet, yeah. But let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me ask you, though, sister, in terms of... Like these fairies, what, what what did they come into into your being um, during during these moments of uh, ch uh, childhood trauma, or was it after or before? I start seeing the fairies when my brother went to school. Okay, I'm not even a year younger than my brother Torrance. He's like my Irish twin. I was born well, oh I was born a week before he turned one, so we're not a year apart. And excuse me, and when we lived in DC, DC, you know, kids can go to school now anywhere from three to five. My brother went to school at three. And I missed him terribly. And then I started seeing the fairies, and they were like, it's going to be okay. They consoled me. They would talk to me. They were like, let's just play, because that's all my brother and I did, because he was three and I was two. We were kids. That's all we did was play. And my brother smiled all the time. He's a sanguine personality, and you, the first thing you see when you see him is his big teeth. He just smiles all the time. Nothing gets him down. 
So I started seeing the first. I remember seeing them at two, by the time I was two. Mm-hmm. I lived in D.C. at the time um, on a first level apartment. And um, it's like, oh, and they wanted me to go with them. Like, um, but I would notice a lot of times when they flew away, they seemed to go out the window or in the wall. And I would like to go to the window and look at them as far as I could see them. But I was scared to go on the wall. <laughs> and then again, I don't even think I could go on the wall. I don't know. But um, we would get to playing and I'd be following them through the house. Mm-hmm. But they were always, I, I haven't had a negative experience with the fairy. Always positive, pleasant, um, I just a beautiful, just a beautiful experience. Gotcha. I'm, 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 I, I let them know. I let them know if 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 any anything surrounding them that's negative, they cannot bring it to me. And I've gotcha. been doing that since I was two. As just, I, I'm able to do that. Gotcha. I'm, I'm, so I'm with thinking, all the stuff I've been through, I'm able to be optimistic and say, "Thank God, I'm still here. I'm here for a purpose to work with children and help them." Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I, you know, as children, and I've, I don't think I've ever had this, to be honest, but I know, you know, just there's this, this whole concept of children that ha- having imaginary friends. Do you think some of those times, true. do you think some of those mm-hmm. times that may actually be fairies or, or no? Of course, of course, because you're, you, you, you know, you three or four years old, you're not told, oh man, that's not real. Okay, perfect example, Alice in Wonderland. How in the heck did this guy create this if it did not come in his mind's eye first? I mean, Mickey I think Mouse, I, all I these think, sort of things. Yeah, I think that, he, I think that, he, I think he might have done some drugs. No, oh, but you know what? It didn't matter. The drugs allowed him to get to that part of the brain that helped Correct. him create their character. Yes, absolutely. Okay? Yes. Right. And that, that might have been the only way he could have gotten there. Correct. He tapped in. Yeah. Because you know, some people don't. They're lazy. They don't know how to get in touch with their creative side. They're mm-hmm. lazy. They want to go yeah. the easy way. But a child, the words, their oyster, everything. You know. And I'm um, like, for instance, like for me. If I'm I'm walking or riding a car or something, if you see a tree, you're gonna say, Okay, that's a tree. That's not a tree to me. That's where ten million fairies live. You see what I'm saying? That's what I see. Mm-hmm. The child's imagination is 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 it's wide open. Until right. it starts hearing things and seeing things and mommy daddy telling them, You're a bad little boy, if you keep seeing this imaginary friend, I'm gonna beat you in here. I mean, you know, I'm not saying don't be aware that your child may or may not have uh, uh schizophrenia or something that you might have to be careful of but if it's if it's in a positive nature and a child understands i have to be a part of society too and quote unquote have this friend or whatever allow them to have their friend if the friend is not telling them to do evil deeds let them have their friend because sometimes like children have an, they're an only child they need some type of comfort mm. yeah but um part of me is wondering mm-hmm. like you know wh- wh- where do you draw the the line that like where do you make the distinction between people that you know, have imaginary friends or fairies, and when it becomes a, a, a an, an unhealthy thing, how how would you know? You know oh, say? I would say I would say it's unhealthy. They seeing it every day. They should not be experiencing it every day. Seeing fairies, you mean? Or no, they shouldn't. I, I don't think it would be. They should be seeing uh, anything considered out of the worldly every day. Hmm. Yeah. So did you did you did you do you think people have control over that or I, I don't know about the fair realm do you have control over that they or what? control over okay like for to a point okay like let's for instance because they're their own entities and they have their own they have free will as we do mm-hmm. okay so they can do what they want but um I'm trying to think um oh let's say for instance if I feel myself uh, a little bit on edge or something like that I might just focus on a fairy song and I could sing it for you but neither one of us will know what it means. <laughs> Sing it. Huh? Sing it. Hush me, Hana, Hana, Hayden. Hush me, Hana, Hana, Ho. Hush me, Hana, Hana, Hayden. Hush me, Hana, Hana, Ho. Hey, my little Motina, Cara, Bara, see the hay. I'm a butter that they are, Cara, I are. Hush me, Hana, Hana, Hayden. Hush me, Hana, Hana, Ho. Hush me, Hana, Hana, Hayden. Hush me, Hana, Hana, Ho. They like that? I've been hearing that song for years. They like that song? Or they, they sing, sing it to you? They sing it to me, but they I sing keep it to hearing you? the song. But that's their language, whatever they... <laughs> gotcha. It's, 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 it it's seems just, like, a, it, uh-huh. like a something like a child would, would comfort a child, no? Yeah, yeah, but it always makes me very, very happy. Mm-hmm. And so if, 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 you know what I'm saying, depending on my mood, and I could just be in a good mood, be like, oh, man, I want to hear this song. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I wish I knew somebody that did music because I would make a song out of that. You know, it would probably be in English or something, but that part I just sang, I would try to create words or something to sound like it to keep, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but I understand. It's a, and it's a healing song. 
Yeah, that's I why like whenever it. I hear it, it's always beautiful. Mm -hmm. let, let, let me so ask you this: that's a gift I got from the fairies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me ask you this: what, what, do you, what do you think the role of empath is in this world? I believe the role of empath is um, healing. One of the main roles is healing. Communication is very important. Um, basically, we could really talk to each other telepathically. We have to learn how and be able to be able to have time um, to focus and be able to do it. You know, like um, like for me, um, I, a part of the reason I don't like it, like a schizotype of typical, you know, they typically don't leave their house. Um, and me, I don't like leaving my house. Mm -hmm. I know I have to leave my house, so I have to force myself to leave my house to survive. Blah blah blah. But um, like um. I could be here, and you could be where you are. And you know how people say, oh, this is a prayer circle, blah, 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 blah. If you were in my circle, I would already know something's wrong with you. And I also have, like, like nightmares. I have visions. And I don't call it being psychic. I call it being empathic. Like, for instance, this past two months, I had a cousin that was on Facebook, and his dad killed his mom, who was my cousin. And he shot himself probably 1999, 2000. Um. Him and his the, the son Mickey, him and his sister and nephew were at a beach near where their parents were buried. And I looked at the picture on Facebook and I'm like, the picture gave me the creeps. And I looked at it again and it gave me the creeps again. And so I brushed it off. And I told my, my fiance, I'm like, you know, the picture gave me the creeps or something. These are really like, what's going on in the picture? I'm like, they were just on the water. Do you know within three weeks, well, within, within a three week period, I had a two week period of having per periodic nightmares of him and my aunt. I found out my aunt is dying from cancer, fourth stage, and my cousin Mickey died. He was homeless and was found by railroad track. Stuff like that happens too, which which is creepy. But um, and like uh, it's just it's it's that that's one of the um challenges I have being an empath. Like, what do you do with that, knowing that somebody you love dearly is going to die? You know what I mean? What well, do you do you, with it? How how does how does that make you feel when you when you when you're sensing that? Oh, I, I just feel like I got to get just get out of my head. Like and, it, and, and, and then um, there are times when I try to meditate, meditate, meditate and get to a point where, OK, if something's going to happen, let it come in my dreams. And so now it's coming. I mean, when I was a child, it used to happen in my dreams and then it stopped for a while and then it started. But it's always happened in my dreams now. So. All right. Yep. You need, you so need, it's back to coming in my dreams. Gotcha. <laughs> this 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 is me. This is me being the uh, the empath drill sergeant that I that I typically am. You need to begin meditating more, sister. You know, you are so right. You are so right. My my fiance and I just moved from here, from, from Maryland to Virginia. And it's a lot of uh, art out here. Newport News, Virginia. I don't know if you heard of Newport News, Virginia, where you are. Mm -mm. Virginia Beach. Yeah, I've heard of it. You heard of Langley Air Force Base, right? I've heard of Everybody's heard of Virginia Beach, but go ahead. Okay. Well, yeah. So uh, my daughter's out here and uh, we moved out here part to be near her. But, um, and my kids, my kids are empaths too, but they're, they're kind of scared. Of me. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. But yeah. And, and, and I believe it's a, and I also believe that, um, my gift came from my ancestors and that's why it can't be explained in normal terms. When I mean normal terms, I mean talking to your mom or your uncle or somebody like, you know, we ain't never heard of that. No, and, I understand. Um, but I always knew that I got my gifts from my ancestors. I didn't even have to have anybody to tell me some things you just no, like you're born, you're born knowing. Yeah, I think I think em empath empathic traits are passed down from our from our parents. You know, mm -hmm. like um, yeah, you're you're right. I need to meditate. So so, you what do. about you? Um, what do you? Um, she's like, let let me let's let me take let me take the pressure off me here before this guy makes me meditate oh, right no, now. It, it doesn't bother me because you're telling the truth. Because I <laughs> yeah. actually I actually think about it. But see, I have a different way of meditating. Like reading is meditation for me. I can read. Now, nah, sister, straight. listen. That's, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut, 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 cut you off out of love here. All right, listen. Here, yes. Are you willing to Are you willing to try something with me right now? An experiment with meditation? Uh, sure. <laughs> All right. All right. Here, here's what we're gonna do. Okay. All right. So here's what I do. We're just We're just gonna close our eyes. Mm -hmm. Right. Take a deep breath through your nose and hold it. And as you hold it, you're gonna feel your heart pounding. Right. Mm -hmm. Hold it for as long as you can and feel that tension rising within you. And then when you're ready to when you're ready to release that tension they have in you, let it out slowly, very slowly and feel yourself being relaxed and more relaxed and more relaxed and in control. All right, we're gonna take another one. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Feel your tension building. Feel your heart pounding. Feel your nervous system. 
When you're ready, release it. Release it slowly and in control. Last one. Deep breath. Hold it. Feel your tension that you barely have any left. Whatever little bit of tension you have left, feel it. And slowly release it under your control. How do you feel, oh. sis? Yeah. <laughs> That's cool because I do that. I just don't do that enough. <laughs> it's okay, but you do feel do you feel a little better, sis? Oh yeah, of course. I felt better as soon as I heard the voice on the phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I hear you. But I, I want to. Well, you I know, wanna... we can we can we can detect each other. You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So what so what it, what it is is that obviously um you know I mean we're empaths, so obviously we we pick up we pick up on the nervous system of other people, you know. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, I, number one, I, I pick up from you that you're very strong and you've had, you've had a, a rough childhood, but you've overcame it, you know, at the mm -hmm. same time, um, you, you still, you still need to begin to, to, to go inward and, and take deep breaths because unfortunately what, what happens is as empaths, I think what we do is we become, we become helpers of uh, all those around us. Um, mm -hmm. and sometimes, which is a great thing, be, being a, being a servant is, 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 is a beautiful thing. And it's, uh. It's very, very godly and very Christ-like, but you need mm -hmm. to you need to also take take time to go inwards and and center yourself, and so you can allow that yeah. allow that spirit of, of love in God within you to overflow more, you know. Mm -hmm. So that that'll get. Yeah, that'll, and I've had a hard time too since my cousin died. She was my best friend, and she died of cancer. She was thirty-four years old. I understand, but at the same time, this this world is is not is not our home, right? So she's in a better place. So you should be happy. Yeah, true. Sure. Correct. Yeah. Okay, That's so true. you should be happy and overjoyed for that, correct? Correct. Is that the way you're feeling or not? Are you feeling overjoyed that she's in heaven or not? Well, I don't believe in going to heaven. <laughs> you don't believe in so you don't believe you don't believe that that there that there's a that there's a everlasting worlds. I don't believe I don't believe everybody goes to heaven. I hear you saying <laughs> I'm not saying everybody goes to heaven, yeah. sister. I'm not saying everybody goes to heaven. I never I never I never said that. And no, I don't believe she's in. I don't believe she's in heaven. Gotcha. But do you? I believe, but do you, she, I believe she just died. You do, okay, so you don't. So, okay, gotcha. So she just died. So do you understand? Do you, what do you believe in the concept of the soul? Do you believe that, that we have a soul? That there's an eternal part of us that that lives forever, or no? That's honestly a whole other conversation. <laughs> no, I understand, but it's okay. I mean, this is this is the kind of place where we can speak about it if you're willing. You don't have to. I mean, well, yeah, I believe I believe that um that um she um she's sleep basically like she sleep. She sleep. Now let me. I'll put it to you this way. Um. This this world, in in my in my understanding, and I guess uh, just speaking from the Christian theology, is a, is a world that um, was this kind of like a matrix. You're trying to say it's not it's not yeah. it's a it's a world it's a imp imperfect world, a world of duality where there's there's love and hate, there's peace and and fear or peace and anxiety. There's you know um, we we came from a place of perfection initially that only had one flaw, if you will, but wasn't really a flaw, called free will. And eventually, somebody somebody or a group of beings chose to, to use their free will to create, to create their, own, their own universe. And we eventually came, in, we eventually came into that world. And, that's, and that's, who, that's, that's who we've been for quite some time. Now, my, my, my understanding is of the role of empaths is we're here to take on a certain amount of pain. Um, just, yeah. like, just like the story of Christ, right? Christ came uh, and, and to take on the pain of the world to create a way mm -hmm. back to his father. We, we all, there's, mm -hmm. a con there's a concept in the Christian's uh, uh, understanding called the body of Christ. So it means that what yep. connects us all is our eternal souls. And we all, we all have certain pains that we've come down here to, to endure, um, mm -hmm. to, to help us transmute that falsehood so it no longer serves a purpose in this world. And right. so, we, so, we can, so we can ascend and, and never have to come back to this place and, and there'll be a new heaven where there, where there will not be any more uh, there won't be any, and there, there will be no other chances to create another world. Meaning, there won't be any more free will in this new heaven. It'll mm -hmm. be, a, and that's why in Islam uh, they say submission to the will of, of God, meaning willful submission. So, meaning that we have to willfully su submit our will to the will of, of, of God, which is basically to to see this world ended. And for me, I believe that, mm -hmm. um, basically, pe people that are, are good people eventually are people that understand this world is not an imperfect place. And I believe that our connection to the to that eternal is what we're calling our souls. Which is the seed of God, which is the seed of the eternal God within us, and that we are all God experiencing itself as if we are separate, and that's why I'm able to sense you, and that's why you're able to sense me. What do you feel about that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe I believe we're here to serve. Mm -hmm. 
But we also have to remember to serve ourselves. Like you said, I, I need to start meditating again. <laughs> correct, correct. But what, but what yeah. do you what do you think about what do you think about the concept of the soul? Do you, do you, do you believe do you believe that we all have a seed a seed of the eternal God within us, and that connects us to an, an eternal place of love? Yeah. Yes, I do. Okay. So, um. In this world, I believe that it's not I believe I didn't make it up. It's just it just it just is what it is. There's there's different planes. I'm sure you know, you must know this as somebody who deals with fairies and and, and other and other realms. Mm-hmm. There's different planes of existence, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah. Um, when most you know when people like you know when they talk about like uh, you ever heard, the, ever heard the term ascended masters? You know, yes. These these people are not they're not they're what they're they're ascended in the what's called the astral world where they don't have where, they, where they've reached a certain uh, enlightenment and they don't have to come back down here in this world. But the, but even the astral realm is still part of the universe. Ultimately, what yeah. we're what we're looking to create is a is a is a is to end this world and to return to heaven, which is obviously we're not in there yet, or else we wouldn't be experiencing pain. Experiencing pain. So when I say when I say that your that that sister died, it's it's she's I don't you know she she I think that the veil in this world is so weak now that people people now have the opportunity to return to an eternal place. But I mean, there's no there, obviously there's no way for me to prove that. But um, no. but I but that's just something you have to kind of in my in my opinion something you have to feel in your heart. I mean, I don't I'm not sure. And I, I've spoken. I mean, I, I think I think you know almost every Christian believes that it's the end. It's the end days or something like that. But what do you, what do you feel? Do you do you feel that like this world obviously? Do you feel like I mean obviously the world's gonna have an end eventually? The end but days too. But I don't believe the earth is going to be destroyed. Well, yeah. Well, Christ says there's a new heaven, a new a new earth, meaning that you know, the, so there will be yeah. something new. We can't. You no, know, we can't. We we're not we're not going to be able to imagine it. But we believe. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. But but you do feel that there's this is kind of a there's a kind of a quickening process going on or of enlightenment. Do you feel mm-hmm. that or no? Okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. That's so, true. gotcha. So, my my whole thing is, if this world's a dream, right, or a matrix, mm-hmm. and we we both know based upon our own individual individual experiences that there's that there's um, just a, a immeasurable cruelty in this world and suffering. When somebody yeah. when somebody is free from this world, right? In mm-hmm. my opinion, in my opinion, I'm mm-hmm. happy personally for them personally. Me personally, because just because I, I, me personally, I, this is just me experiencing what I've experienced. I, I, I don't, I don't necessarily. Even though I love children, I okay. personally would not want to bring a child into this world currently, um, just because of just in being a black man. I would not want to bring bring another black man into this world if I if I could avoid it. So, you, ever say? so you don't have children. I, I'm, my goal is to meditate. And to help us uh, help us ascend and end this world. Okay, I see what you mean. Right, we're we're right. not going to, you know, we're not going to need children in heaven. You know what I'm going to say? So I mean, oh, yeah, right. I see what you mean. Yeah, right. that's my goal. So I'm just trying to say that, like that, when, the, you know, the, the the name of the show is called Afro Empath Ascension. So the whole point is ascension. The whole point is to raise the raise the, the vibration and the frequency of this Ration. world to the to the mm-hmm. point where nothing no, no no nothing of a lower nature will no longer have a purpose. The I feel that mm-hmm. the that evil feeds off of fear. And it needs to constantly create fear in order to keep the vibration of the world down, you know, mm-hmm. and by and by becoming strong and becoming a force that overpowers that evil and that fear based reality, we can it'll, it'll it can help us ascend, you know, so I'm just I'm just trying to be a beacon of light and love in this world. Mm-hmm. 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 We appreciate that. Oh, I mean, yeah, I mean, I appreciate you. I mean, we're, we all we all we all have roles to do, you know, so I, I, I appreciate the, the world that you've come in here in, you, in your own in your own strength and your own uh, trials and tribulations of suffering and, and, uh, and triumph. Mm-hmm. But I just I just wanted wow. to com- I just want to take the time to comfort you in terms of your, your loss of your friend, you know, or whoever, whoever oh, it was. I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate it. I mostly miss her laugh. <laughs> yeah, I understand. I understand. I understand, and that's fine. Yeah. That I mean, that that's fine. You know, what what I would do is I would meditate and and just try and tap into her energy and feel that with you during your meditation. You know, because mm-hmm. a, a lot of empaths, I, I speak to a sister who's another who's another empath, and uh, she talked about her her friend, or not her friend. I think one of, one of her family members that passed away, and she had a really hard hard time with that. You know, and um, I had a similar conversation with her. You know, basically we can get we can get caught up in in the in this in this illusion. And for, forget mm-hmm. that, you know, I, I think that when we were really spiritually enlightened, like when we first fell into mm-hmm. this world, um, mm-hmm. when, when somebody came into this world, it would it would be it would be something more like um, like we would be crying because now something something from heaven came into this world. You know what I'm going to say? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then w- when they pass and in some in some cultures, actually, when people pass, it, they throw big giant celebrations for them because they know they're no longer here. Yep. Um, but mm-hmm. unfortunately, our, our culture is maybe a little bit different where we're sad. Um, yeah. And, and, and in, the, in the Bible, you know, there, there's, you know, Christ does not does not cry over people that are dead. You know, in the Bible, it talks about 
you're better you're better off being being in another world than in this world you know mm-hmm. so i mean that's my thing personally i i you know I, like i you know i love my mother but when my mm-hmm. mother's gone i mean if i cry it's only because my of my own missing of her and my own longing for her but not not but i'm at the same time i'll be happy that she's no longer in this world and that she's free free yep yeah mm-hmm. that's all but well, um that's yeah exactly I just, I just wanted to help bring you some, some peace and comfort out of love for you. Oh, I really appreciate that. That made my problem. day. Not a problem, sis. Not a problem. And, and listen, you better keep meditating. I'm, I'm like I said, I'm the, I'm the oh, em- I promise. I I'm promise. The, I will. I'm the empath drill sergeant. So oh, I'm sorry. I said, I'm the, I'm the oh, empath drill feel- sergeant. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. I make sure you empaths that's are meditating, funny. especially. That's my thing. That's my thing. Right, right. I need you, we need to be so, at peace. Go ahead, sis. Yeah. So your podcast is on the, uh, group right you said yeah it is yeah i got several episodes in my next my next episode i'm gonna be i'm gonna be talking about um many many different topics relating to empaths but uh, but um um what one one yeah i mean i would just just listen we have lots of good episodes and you know i think i think it's important Mm -hmm. for empaths to be able to listen to other empaths you know what i'm saying because there's there's so many there's so many things we can learn from each other we are we are the most intelligent beings in this world you know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Pretty much it. Like, you know, not trying to toot our, toot our own horns, but you, we both know that we, the way, the way we perceive the world is on a, on a, on another level compared to most people who think they're intelligent, but, but don't have the, this, the emotional intelligence really, which is more important than IQ yeah. to understand. Yeah. The, see, I'm, I'm intuitive. Like this last job I had worked with children, I did everything on, under the sun and they just kept complaining for six years that I didn't got, I didn't go have a college degree. And I tried to explain to them, I'm an intuitive learner. I'm like, what have I, what have I not done that you asked me to do that I was supposedly not qualify for? They had no answer. <laughs> so schizotypal, where, where did you first hear that term and what, and what, it, what, what is the definition of, definition of it? Oh God! I first heard it before I got disability, and they told me that they had they could not figure out what my my disability was, and I was mm-hmm. highly intelligent. And I'm like, I just um have premenstrual dysphoria disorder. No, we don't think you have that. I'm like, well, I never had with my dad, and my mom going through what they went through, and us being homeless. I didn't get depressed a day in my life until a month before I started my cycle. That is when I started getting depression a month before my cycle. So they were like, oh, no, we don't know if you have bipolar. We don't know if you have this. Or like maybe two or three years. And they said, Janita, it was hard to diagnose you because schizotypes are typically male. <laughs> I'm a black woman. And I'm just listening to this spiel. But whenever I ask the doctor what it is, they always look in the, the DMV. Why are you looking in the book? If you got to look in the book to tell me what I have, you don't know what I have. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I just think differently. You know, I think outside the box. But uh, schizotypes are just, um, they can be loners. Um, they're, they're just, I mean, I don't know. They're just, they're geniuses. It's just like, um, and like more than a regular genius. You know how somebody could be a genius and they're like a genius artist. They can paint anything. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I can, I can, let's say for instance, in a group with a group of kids, I'm very good at problem solving. Like I said earlier, um, like, uh, Maybe something to do with technology. Like, for instance, I had a friend. He had a problem with his um, heater. I don't know anything about a heater. <laughs> so, not his heater, his hot water tank. So, I asked him for the book. And I looked in the book. And I told him exactly what was wrong with the heater. And he's like, how do you know that? I have never done that in my life. Just having an open mind and be like, you know what? This is a problem to solve. Relax. And it will open your mind. You can figure it out. It's not rocket science. Not but schizotypes are like that. So, they, they kind of, and I've had, like, I mostly male friends, because when I have female friends, they find me very intimidating. And I'm like, you shouldn't find me intimidating. You should be intimidating. <laughs> and I don't mean in the boxing ring. I mean mental. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hear you saying. Now, I, I, yeah. I, I wonder, I wonder, so, um, I wonder sometimes if some of these, um, uh, what they're calling, I guess, uh, personality disorders, right? Or mental disorders, mm-hmm. right? Um, spiritual. Yeah, they're, they're, what, what, what they're what they're calling it is just something that we we would understand in the in the ancient world as to somebody who just has spiritual gifts, you know. Right, and see the the last doctor I sat, saw because I got tired of seeing doctors that prescribe medicine because I basically healed myself of medicine. I used to do yoga. I I just I I didn't take any medication, and um, I saw I found this doctor who was from the islands, Doctor Booth. She was amazing, and she saw me for free. I was her only schizotypal. Mm-hmm. And she and I had actually started on a book 
because I would basically, you know, or I want to write a book to help other people, and I would just ask her questions and take notes and stuff, and she let me bring my laptop in there and type what I needed to type before I left, but she's not here, you know what I mean? She's in another state. Mm -hmm. But she was amazing. She would just smile, and she'd be like, I love how your brain works. I'm like, really, you do? Because <laughs> most people don't like it. <laughs> mm -hmm. But she understood me perfectly. <clears throat> and then um, I, I said I'm not going to get married. By the time I'm 50, if I'm not married at 50, I won't get married. I had no desire to get married, and I met somebody at 49, and guess what? We're getting married in a month. <laughs> oh, nice. But I always knew if I got married, I would get married late in life. Yeah, I hear what you're saying, yeah. I like my freedom too much. You know, there are people that want to know who you are 24-7. Oh, you can't do that to me. I need my space. And schizotypals have a thing about their space too. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. But also, but I mean, again, like, and, and I, I'm, gl I'm glad that we have the, um, you know, like the DSM understanding of it. But I mean... Mm -hmm. Everything you're saying also is, is an empath trait, as you as you know. Yeah, and that, you're absolutely right. Yeah, and like, exactly. For instance, um, some of them might believe in the occult. It yeah. says, um, let's see, they're hearing some things that aren't there. Uh, I'm trying to think what else they have in the same. Because they're like different, like they have like 10 traits or whatever they might use to diagnose you and know, all this, you know, stuff or whatever. Yeah, of course. I mean, a, lo and a lot of... one doctor that said, I don't believe you're schizotypal. <laughs> I'm like, okay, whatever, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I know a lot, a lot, a lot of these, um, like Jung and Freud and things like that. They, they, they obviously they study the occult. You know what I'm trying to say? So right. So mm -hmm. I mean, I, the, you know, basically what lo, a lot of what psychology really is is just, um, you know, a, a, a just a general baseline occult understanding without it, yep. putting God in it. You know what I'm trying to say? And putting the spirit world in it. You know what I'm trying to say? It's 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 basically a, it's a occult world for dummies. Yeah, and you know what else I love? I love symbology. I'm into I'm into symbols. Okay, what do you mean by that? I've always been, um, like, what does the symbol mean? Like, uh, let's say, for instance, the royal, like, uh, the royal family, their crest, what does that symbol mean? Stuff like that. I mm -hmm. love studying symbols. And this is stuff I do in my free time. I'm a research geek. Um, mm -hmm. So I really, I really don't get bored a lot being by myself because I'm going to do something for me that yeah. keeps me relaxed. And that's like my meditation, too. Mm -hmm. um, like, for example, my brother's stepson had a rare form of leukemia. He got diagnosed when he was 19, and he's been cancer-free for a few years. But anyway, he um, his feet kept hurting. So I talked to his mom, asked her a couple questions, and um, I had just left McDonald's where I was using the Internet, the free Internet. And she called me and said, oh, Jason, maybe you can tell us what's wrong with Anthony. His feet hurt the most. I've heard him. And I asked a few questions. She's like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So I went back to McDonald's, and in three minutes I found the answer was wrong with his feet. It was a side effect of the medication they were giving him. They gave him some balls that made his feet hurt. Mm -hmm. I'm not a doctor. I don't have a degree at all. I don't even have an associate. No, I hit your sign. Yeah. Just me, it just, yeah. And I actually looked at my watch and I'm just like, it literally took me three minutes to find that error out. No, I understand. Just, that's yeah. when I really want to be, that's the empathic part too. I really wanted to help somebody. Give yeah. them some comfort. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I was like, go back to the doctor, get these tests done, and they're going to tell you. And she said, two weeks later, you know what the doctor said, the exact same thing you said. So we paid him all this money. I'm like, yeah, but I can't, I'm not a doctor. <laughs> no, exactly. You know? No, it's it's yeah. I mean, it's it's obviously good to have people in your life that are empathic and intuitive. But obviously, you know, sometimes mm -hmm. sometimes that'll just that that can just help you, you know, g go to the people that can that can give you the the correct uh, diagnosis, you know, or give you a little insight, yeah. you know. So yeah, and then I worked at FDA for eight and a half years too, so I know some medical terminology and stuff, and I understand a lot of it. So mm -hmm. you know, if somebody in my family has questions and stuff, I would I would tell them, but I would always tell them to go to their doctor. You I know what you. I mean? I'm yeah. not I'm not I'm not gonna try to be one of those people where I know everything. No, go to your doctor and see what your doctor says. Yeah, yeah. So um you're are you you're an INFP as well? You know, um I think one time it said INFP and one time it said INTJ. Mm. <laughs> but I think it said INTJ. Okay, I, I don't know what that one is. But have, um, have you done it? You've done you've it? done that Myers Briggs personality thing? Yeah, yeah, intuitive. Wait a minute. Intuitive Wait a minute, T J. The J is judgment. I N T J. What is it? Two. Yeah, because the I N F P. That's the feeler. Mhm. Mm yeah. Okay. Yeah, but the first time I took it, it was I N T J. And I think a few. I think I took it like twice in a few years or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was I N T J first, though. So yeah. Gotcha. So. So you are you I N F P? Yeah. Yeah, I've done it. I have, I'm an I N F P. Yeah, which sounds sounds, yeah, sounds about I, right. Yeah. Seems seems like a lot of. So I think the INF, if, I, I think the INTJ if is rare for females to have it. I think mm -hmm. that's the one. Gotcha. Yeah. 
So l- let me ask you this. Um, so you're getting married soon, yeah? Yeah, in a month. Okay. Now, do, do, do you ha- do you have any, have you had any children or no? Oh, my kids are grown. My daughter's daughter and son in the military, <laughs> and gotcha. he has a son and daughter that are older. Gotcha. So what, yeah, was, that, what was it like raising children as uh, as an empath? And a schizotypal. Oh my God, it was so hard because everything, my children were going to get raped. I was like, you know, panic and panic and panic. But I did the best to make sure they had a a great life. Um, I was a single parent because you know I didn't want to get married. Mm-hmm. And um, my son has a sanguine temperament, outgoing, sociable, loves people. My daughter's introverted like I am. Um, my son did all kinds of sports. He wore me out from the time he was born, like. And my daughter was um like um she would be like me like being a, on the weekend being in the room reading books or stuff mm-hmm. like that because <laughs> I was a super geek in school, but my son was he would not keep still. But um it was challenging. But thank God I had my mom, I had my dad, and me having older sisters and brothers. I had you know and my cousin that was alive, Katina, the one that died. I had somebody to talk to for comfort and help with advice. But I kept my kids. I kept them in sports. I volunteered from the time my daughter started school. She's the oldest. She's 32. My son's 26. So 30-something years, I volunteered in the school system in Charles County, Maryland, like so, you know, to help them because it was very, very racist there. Mm -hmm. And my son, actually, both of my kids could have skipped a grade, but they didn't want to. My daughter could have skipped, wait a minute, my daughter could have skipped sixth grade, and my son could have skipped fifth grade. They could have graduated 16, but they didn't want to, so I didn't pressure them. But they were both ahead when they started school. I put them in school at three. And my son is, um, I'm sure you're familiar with the military. He's an E7, and he's about to be an E7, and she's an E6. So he, he surpassed her, <laughs> and she went in. She's the oldest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, so what's, oh, I meant to tell you another thing about me, too. Yeah. You know how I told you, uh, like, um, if I don't feel well? Yeah. Well, I learned a long time ago, if I don't feel well, I need to create. That is that is healing for me. Mm. So here they have all these arts programs. They have like a lot of STEM schools where they're going to probably go into uh, substituting at one of the STEM schools, but the school year is almost over, so next year. But um, like I've been in two open mics since I've been here. Um, they have a, I did a tie-dye my first shirt. All this stuff is just like, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I am in heaven here. And then my friend, he likes the stuff, too, so he goes with me. <laughs> okay, but you, you're, where were you originally born at? Where were you originally, originally raised uh, I at? I was born in uh, Southeast D.C. <laughs> D.C., okay, gotcha. And so how, how, yeah. how was the culture where you're living now, which is what, Virginia? Yeah, it's, it's everybody. It's military. Uh, there's a lot of Navy people here. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's very mixed. I love it. Very mixed. Gotcha. Every day they have something having to do with art. Like there's a, a Downing Gross Cultural Center, Cultural Art Center, five minutes from us. <laughs> Excuse me, that's why I did my first open mic. They have, uh, what is it, 35th Venue. They have a group of, it's called Hampton Roads Writers. So I'm going to join them. It's like $35 a year. And you can get uh, discounts to different events and stuff like that. Mm. And you know the actress, Brooke Shields, she's going to be at one of the colleges or somewhere. Okay. Uh, this month or next month performing. And, um, you know, uh, Missy Elliott and Timberland, they came from Virginia. Mm. Yep. So it's a, lot, it's a lot of art here. It's just oh. unbelievable. Okay. And where so we were, it was, it was, uh, go ahead. I was just going to say, you like writing, yeah? Yeah. Have you, have and you I, ever? You, I don't like writing poetic quotes. Poetic quotes? Oh, okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yep. Hmm. I'm, I'm only saying, I'm only saying because I, I'm, I'm just recently starting a, a, a blog. Part, part, of, part of what I'm doing is, is, is a blog and a podcast. So, if there's anything mm-hmm. that, you, if there's anything that you would ever be able to want, want to contribute on that, let me know. In terms of just, you know, just in terms of your occult understanding as well, that that might maybe that be, if you think, if you think of anything that could be useful to other people that might be schizotypals or maybe have d- dealt with uh, okay. your gift, you know, it's some, something that just an outlet if you wanted to be able to share it with the world. That's something I'm looking to oh, help, well, of help facilitate. Of yeah, of course, because that's healing. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, I, but basically, what, what yeah. I'm tr- what I'm trying to create is I'm trying to create what I wish I would have had gro- gro- uh, growing up. Does that make sense? <laughs> yep. <laughs> so that yeah, that's, but that's I write I'm... I write inspirational quotes too. So my stuff, you know, if I write like two lines or four lines, it's um, it's positive and inspirational. Like my daughter, mm-hmm. she's 32, and um, I started writing her a poem years ago. It's an ongoing poem because of love. It's called a love story between mother and daughter. Mm-hmm. And she went to the military, so every year I add four poems. Four, word, four lines to her poem, and I put them on Facebook. Mm. So she has this poem that she's had. I'm going to write it until I pass on. <laughs> mm. So every year I'm adding to her poem. Gotcha. Yep. 
Any, anything else? Uh, we're getting, we're kind of hitting the hour mark here, but is there anything else that you want to talk about before we, we close here? Oh, no, I'm good. I mean, I appreciate you reminding me about the meditation and stuff. Not a problem. I do, I do need, I do need the spiritual drill sergeant in my life. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can, I can friend, tell. He doesn't really believe, he doesn't really believe in God. He'll let you talk about, but he, um, he doesn't really believe in God. His family doesn't, they didn't, they don't really practice a religion. Is that, is that the person you're looking to marry? Mm-hmm. He doesn't believe in God? He believes he believes in God. He just doesn't like go to church and stuff like that. Cause I don't go to church to either. I don't I don't go to church, right, church, right, church either. Saying, but I mean, but but he um he doesn't like like if I talk about the Bible or something like that. He's not negative. He asks questions. He said when I explain things to him, he understands. But he was a spy, so he saw some stuff in the past. Gotcha. Yeah, he was in the military. Understood. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, we sometimes the, dre the drudgery of life kind of can throw off, throw off, throw us off our, our path a little bit, you know. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I definitely want to contribute to the uh, blog. Yeah, if you can. So I mean, I can, I can start writing some now and then uh, test base with you or whatever. However you want me to do it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, my, my whole thing is, you know, I, I'm I'm just starting off here, and I can't I can't promise any anybody anything. You know what I'm trying to say? But I mean, you can you could submit it, and you know, if if it's something that I feel can be useful, then that's fine. You know, mainly it's not. I'm not looking for necessarily poetry. I'm looking for things that are like really, you know, exper experience. Like yeah, exactly. Experiences that can help people. Like, um, like again, I'm looking to create a. A resource for people like us, meaning that if you were, you know, uh, 18, 18 again, right? Mm -hmm. Or whatever, whenever, whenever, whenever you were just trying to find whatever, or whatever place in your time, time in your life when you were um, trying to figure out why maybe you were different than other people or why you were introverted than other people or what, why you were seeing things that you were seeing that other people weren't seeing. Um, mm -hmm. And you were looking online, and all you all you found was maybe uh, white people or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Or the or the or mm -hmm. the stories of other people, you know, because you look at you type, type an empath, and it's generally all white people. I don't know why, but it is. Um, yeah. So we, you know, we we have we have obviously our our own rich legacy of spiritual tradition um, yep. and occult science, which all which all came from us. So we we need to we need to be, begin to. Um, begin to honor, honor that aspect of our, of ourselves and not and not hide it hide it away and um mm -hmm. and, and create and create and create a culture that is healthy you know what i'm trying to say yes um yes. Th that yeah and that also is uh, c centered in people that are that are of faith as well you know what i'm trying to say because sometimes unfortunately people that are of faith a lot of times um feel as if they can't speak about things that are of a, a cold or esoteric nature so I think that's, mm -hmm. I think, I think, it's a, I think it's a positive thing because if, if you do, yeah, me too. Yeah. If you, if you should, you know, if you see fairies or something like that and you're, and you're a, a woman of faith, you should be able to talk about that with somebody that, that not, that doesn't make it, make you feel as if you're evil for, for seeing that, you know, or I'm not, I'm not yeah, sure they would not. Yeah, that's not judgmental. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because, because I, you people, know, I've, people can cross a line of religion and think they have a right to judge you, but the Bible says just not, that's, you be judged. So you correct. really don't have a right to judge somebody. You can say, I'm under, I'm not, I don't understand. I don't feel yeah. comfortable continue this conversation. Okay, yeah. fine. End of discussion. But don't, you don't have to browbeat somebody. Yeah, exactly. You know, that's and evil, I, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. I've, I've experienced the same thing. I mean, I talked to a, a, a pastor of a, a church one time, and I don't really go to church, but I went mm -hmm. there for my mother, and we had a great conversation. But mm -hmm. but I mentioned at the end that I, I found God through meditation. And uh, he was like, yeah. oh, meditation? Is that, <laughs> isn't that when you allow demons into your life? And I'm like, no, mm -hmm. not at all. You know, and he's like, yeah, oh, that's know, what I, I was told, too. So, so then, yeah, so then, you know, then he, I was, I talked to him more about it. He's, he's like, oh, you mean Christian meditation? I'm like, come on, man. <laughs> Really? All I got to do is say they, Christian they, in front of me? It, yeah, because if they read the Bible, the Bible says Jesus went to the God of Gethsemane for prayer and meditation. Okay, it didn't say just prayer. It said prayer and meditation. Exactly. Bingo. So, so that, 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 it, that signified a difference right there. Yeah, exactly. But the Bible mentions meditation, I think, like 22 times or, or over that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, so, I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's, just, it's, it's an, unfortunately, um, I think a lot. I think a lot of Christians are unfortunately they're they're fear based and they're paranoid, yeah. and um, mm -hmm. they they they're at a stage of belief and they don't because they don't trust their own hearts. They have a, they have a fear to to understand other other aspects of themselves and other aspects of other cultures and ultimately everything all, everything came out of Africa in the first place. So if everything everything has yes, a source amen. and a root, you just you just need you just need to find it. You just need to find it. And uh, unfortunately, a lot of people are just happy with what they have and that's good if, if that if that keeps you off you know if that keeps you uh you know centered and you're not out here shaking your butt on instagram or whatever that's fine i, I guess i'd rather have that you know it's, it's better, better than, it's better than being lost in the world but i mean at the same time you, you need, need to be respectful of other people as well and i, I think i'm just trying to create a, a culture of um of understanding and i think this podcast will help with that so i i thank you again yeah, for your time i, I really think Go it ahead. would because you're a very positive person it will thank you i appreciate that 
Um, yeah, but we'll talk on the, I guess on the uh, on the page. Yeah, absolutely, Zess. I, I thank you again for your time. Okay, thank you. All right, you have a great day. Namaste. You Peace. We are yeah, hello. Yeah, we, we are joined by the lovely Amani J, who apparently has seen a fairy. This 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 is this is what I, this is what I've heard. Well, I've never heard I've never heard anybody talk about it like how she was talking about it, mm. and it it reminded me of something that I saw a long time ago, but I, I didn't tell anybody. Okay. Well, I only saw it one time though. All right. Well, could you you mind telling you mind telling our listeners or? <laughs> I don't know. I just saw. I don't know if it's a fairy, but I mm. saw a. Something, something <laughs> is just kind of crazy. It was like a little tiny, tiny person, mm -hmm. a tiny person with wings, and so the way the wings, yeah, good. The, the way the way the wings were fluttering, like it was kind of like a like a butterfly, but no. And the wings, the wings move very, very fast. And it, and it kind of floats, like it kind of flies and floats. And it, it was a tiny person that showed itself to me. And that's, and then it was gone. And I never saw it again. And I never said anything. How were you? Because I was thinking, I was young. I was probably like, uh, maybe around seven, seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, were you thinking, go, go back to what you were saying. What was I thinking? You were thinking if you, you were thinking you were thinking if you told somebody what you saw that they would think you're crazy is what you're saying, right? Correct. Well, at that moment, because I was young, I just saw it and I thought, oh, <laughs> like it was kind of scary, but it was kind of cute at the same time. Mm -hmm. But I was young, and that time I didn't really talk about like I used to like play a lot on my own, so I didn't really talk about things because you know when you're young you don't even know what's real what's not real you're still discovering stuff mm -hmm. but as i got older and i remembered that thing that i saw i thought to myself oh my god like what the hell was that like i can't tell somebody you tell somebody you saw a tiny person what are they gonna say to you yeah i hear what you're saying yeah you can't really tell somebody that so you just keep it to yourself and then i've heard people talk about that same fairy but not to the detail that she she is speaking about it. Hold on, this exact that exact same fairy that you saw, or just fairies in general? No, just I don't. It just remind what she's talking about mm -hmm. reminds me of what I saw. Okay, can you? Can I you, don't know. I don't know what she saw. Like I don't. She's saying it's something beautiful. Yeah. Now to me, it, it as a kid, it was something cute. I looked at it as cute, maybe a little bit pretty, but weird because why is it so small? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I didn't think beautiful. So I don't know what she saw. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if I saw a fairy or what the frig I saw, but hearing her describe what she saw, it, it reminds me of what I saw. Mm -hmm. Now, l let me ask you, what, what exactly did it look like? What, what, what was this? Did it, have, did it have a skin tone, like a human skin tone or human hair or... It had hair. It had, it had hair. It had um, like a body, like like a body, like a person, and and it had um, like what, like a fucking white person, a black person, an Indian person, a Chinese person. Give me a description it here. Wasn't, it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> I can't remember if it was a a, a China, uh, Like you can't tell. I can't remember if it. Was, I just know that the body of it was built like a human. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I don't remember if it was white or black or what, but it was the body is built like a human. And I've never seen up until that time. I had not seen, I've seen bugs. Mm -hmm. I've seen butterflies. And when you look up close to them, it's a, it's a, a bug. Like it's, it's, it's shaped like a bug. Mm -hmm. It has, you know, like, but this thing wasn't shaped like a bug. It was shaped like a person, like this head, the hair, the two arms, the hands, the legs, mm -hmm. and then it had wings. And the wings, the way the wings were flapping were so fast, like you can hardly see. You can hardly see the wings flap. That's how fast it was going. And I thought to myself, oh, that's so cute. But then I was kind of scared a little bit, but I, I'm more, 
I don't know. I think I, I took it as cute because I was still young. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to see that shit now. <laughs> gotcha. I don't want to see that now. But like at that time, when you're a kid, you can see. Okay. I've seen um, I woke up in the middle of the night to a freaking glowing figure sitting at the foot of my bed. And it was a lady. And all and I couldn't tell if she was black or white. Once again, her skin was just glow, glowing. And I was scared, scared shitless. I covered my uh, head with my um, covers and I, I, I didn't even want to breathe because I thought that if I breathe, she's going to see my stomach. <laughs> she's going to hear me breathing. Oh I just, I thought if I froze, mm-hmm. she would just disappear. Mm. And I stayed like that until the sun, sun came up. And then I peeked and, and I didn't see nothing. And then I went to sleep. Mm. What do, you, what do you think that was? What do you think that was in retrospect? I have no idea. Gotcha. All I thought, I thought that maybe, like after a while, and I think about it, I was thinking, I wonder if it was like my grandmother. I don't know why I thought it was my grandmother because, like, people talk about ghosts and stuff like that, and they come to visit you. But I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. That was scary to me, man. Hmm. But she didn't do anything. She was just sitting there looking at me Mm. it's not like she went to grab me or anything like that so i was scared because i thought she was gonna grab me Mm -hmm. but she didn't gotcha so those are the two craziest shits i saw (laughs) but all right let's 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 go back to the fairy here now you're 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 a young Mm -hmm. kid now where where are you at give me the setting and where where do you see this little thing you see on a damn tree you see it on a freaking you know park bench where exactly what in jamaica okay it wasn't it wasn't here it was a rasta fairy no, it wasn't. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> 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 I was in Jamaica. We were outside in the country, and I'm like, I would like play. You know, like oh, I'm the type of person that when I was a kid, I would go off on my own and climb trees and play and and do all kinds of little like my. I like playing alone. So I must have been off into the the. Um, in the country area, the wooded areas, playing around, and I saw the thing come, like near me, which was on a tree, like on a on a bush or something like that. It just flew, and it came and sat on a on a uh, what do you? I don't know. Whatever. It, it sat there for a while, looked at me. No, and, it sat on a what? It sat on a what? Tell me exactly what the hell it sat on. Okay. You know when you're in the countryside, like you're, you could be playing in the countryside, like mm-hmm. all your scenes around you is just bushes and tr- like trees and like um, shrubs. I don't know what you call them, but they're they're surrounded by greenery. Yes. Okay. W- wooded greenery. It came to me, close to me, mm-hmm. and then I saw it. I looked at it, and then it went away. <laughs> That's now- it. You you saw it. It saw you, correct? It saw me. Yeah, it saw me. It wanted me to see it. <laughs> okay, and it looked up at you with its eyes. It looked at me. Yeah. What What did the eyes look like? Just two eyes, like a person's eyes, like. So basically, you're saying it looked. Just it had a. Like, it looked like a human. A human. Gotcha, but you don't remember the skin tone. But I don't remember the skin tone. All I'm seeing is like a dark. What about the hair? What color? What kind of hair was it? The hair was like um, how was the hair? I can't remember, but I know it had hair. It mm-hmm. didn't have like no afro or anything. Like that. Mm-hmm. I think it was just like it just looked like a person though, and I was like, how the hell can a something look look like a person? Like you, you and you're a kid, you don't think, you know. And yeah. you're fearless a little bit too. Like you're scared, but you're you're also inquisitive. So you're you're not gonna like be like ah. Mm-hmm. Like if I saw it now, oh my whole body would just freaking. <laughs> you know I can't see that now. No, it's just fun. It's just funny just to think to, to think of that. How um, as you become an adult, you become fear. Well, obviously, you know you are tra- traumatized by your experiences as an adult as well. You know. Plus, yeah. as an adult, you have responsibilities too, and you get you get matrixed out. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. And yeah. I prayed, I prayed to God a long time ago when I was a kid to 
because I was so sensitive and at night I would like see things and stuff like that. I prayed to God and said, God, please don't let me see any more things that I can't handle. Yeah. Cause I, you know, like I don't want to see anything more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I haven't seen anything since like, I haven't seen the, like what people would ca- call a ghost or something. I'd never mm-hmm. see that. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the, speaking to the sister about about fairies, she said um, so, something to the degree of you know, if if you if you were to see them like uh, you know she sees them you know she could see them for you know w- once a year or you know but it's not she doesn't she doesn't see them like every day. I'm gonna say she said that if you if you would you know I, I asked her basically what, I said when when would this become unhealthy? You know to say when you're you know like when would when would when would, when would being in contact with fairies be unhealthy? And she says she's basically like um, you know if you were to see them every day. So I think like for her whatever, yeah, for I whatever don't re- want to see. yeah for her for whatever <laughs> reason she she's 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 never lost that. You know to say that that childlike heart of hers. You know to say yeah that's that's yeah. I think that I think that's the key. <laughs> that's the key to be, being able to. That's like the gateway to for for these. That's the gateway for these type of, um, I guess, beings. I guess you call them, right? Uh, or fairies, or whatever, to to kind of, um, and you know, show themselves to you. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but for me, I mean, I, I mean, I don't know. Who knows? You know, maybe maybe one day I'll do shrooms and I'll see a fairy or something like that. You know, but right now, um, you know, I gotta, I gotta, uh, I gotta, I gotta function this matrix. It's already hard enough with all my anxiety and my and my empathic my strong empathic abilities and the rage i feel in this world you know what i'm trying to say mm-hmm. so but uh but it's, it's not it's, like they're doing anything any anything like like i don't i don't think it's something that you even really need to see like yeah, exactly, people don't yeah. need to see that yeah you know? exactly yeah a bingo yeah that's exactly exactly i i, yeah. I, I see I, I i never i never doubted that there could that there could be such things as fairies you're know trying to say i just mm-hmm. like i told the sister i was like um it's just personally not my, my not my purpose on earth. You know what I'm trying to say? We all we all have different, yeah. we all have different roles to play. You know what I'm trying to say? And um, yeah. me personally, in this in th- in this incarnation, that's that's not my role here. You know what I'm trying to say? My my role is to get us the hell out of this out of this world, fairies included. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? So um, that's my role. But I mean, you know, I could I could I could always dabble at some point and maybe you know if I wanted to. But you know, we'll 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 see, we'll see where life takes me.